What is up, Stockton, California? This is 93.5 KWDC Delta College Radio, and I'm your girl, Carolita. And this is your boy, Choi. We got the mayor leaking up in the building. What's up? What's up, 209? <laughs> we out of here. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what is up, Stockton? You're listening to 209 Talk on 93.5 KWDC Stockton. 209 Talk is a collaboration where local college students sit down with the mayor. The show you are tuned into right now was put together by students enrolled in the broadcasting courses in the digital media department at San Joaquin Delta College. Thanks for listening and supporting College Radio. This week, we're going to be talking about economic development in Stockton. And we got me, Carolina, and Megan, and Mayor Lincoln. How are you? Good. How are you guys? <laughs> Excited. It's a fun topic. Absolutely. Right? It's always fun hanging out with you guys, though. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, what is economic development? When you think about economic development, you think about what we do as a community to in- improve our local economy and improve the overall quality of life for our community. And so specifically with Stockton, we kind of break that out into four different areas. Uh, One is economic development itself. The second is housing. The third is parking and venues. And uh, the fourth is is real estate. That's how we categorize uh, economic development, future economic development, and community growth within the city of Stockton. Can I get those four again? So it's housing. Yeah, economic development, housing, parking and venues. Uh Uh-huh. And real estate. By parking and venues, that can be like businesses or just like parking and venues as in, when I think of a venue, I think of bars and clubs. <laughs> so I, you think about parking in, in, in venues, like we have a lot of parking structures uh-huh. uh, in the downtown area, especially, um, and there's a lot of businesses around there. And so, you know, in order to be able to accommodate uh, customers, mm-hmm. you want to make sure that they have a safe place to park and for your venues. And, and then as far as venues are concerned, uh, we have a lot of great assets uh, downtown with the ballpark, uh, with our with our arena, um, and uh, with our Weber Point Convention Center. Okay, so the venues is like um, places where a large group of gathering come together? Absolutely. So you think about parking and venues, you think about um, those spaces uh, that are open to the public. Mm, okay. <clears throat> stuck in one of those parking garages for like an hour one time after going to the Joe Satriani concert because everybody's just in a line. No one was moving because it was backed out to the street. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. no. No. That's why I park on the street most of the time. I'm not getting caught in those. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll park a couple blocks away before I get stuck in a parking lot. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm not going to pay the fees either. Yeah. The fees are kind of too much. For tax revenue? <laughs> For the city, giving back. I don't know. Hey, come on. That, that's how we maintain those venues and those public spaces. Are you sure about that? Because I pay for, like, the downtown parking, and you're going to get in an elevator that smells like straight pee. <laughs> like... So this is quickly turning into a roast <laughs> of our parking and venues in downtown Stockton. And uh, for all I'm sure you said what a lot of other people think or, or feel and want to say. So that's noted. Mm-hmm. And um, that that's definitely noted. Yeah, yeah. they did have like a, I don't know, the one that goes from the courthouse. I know that's cleaner than it used to be. So they are upgrading a little bit, but. I know they need a little bit more. I'd be scared to get stuck in one of those, to be honest. I'd be like, should I just walk up there? (laughs) But that's everywhere. That's not just Stockton. That's not a Stockton thing. Um, So with businesses, do you think businesses are a part of the economic development? Like, do you, is there any money going into not only these big venues and parking structures or real estate? Is it also going into these businesses around Stockton? Businesses are at the core of our economic development uh, strategy. Uh, We can't have a thriving economy without uh, thriving local and and small businesses throughout our community. And so for us, it's very important to not only understand that that is a priority, but then make sure that uh, the policies, the programs that we implement um, make it a lot more easier uh, for businesses um, to 
do business uh, in, in the city of Stockton. We want uh, our residents, we want our business owners, uh, business community to see the city of Stockton uh, as a partner, uh, not a barrier for them to want to accomplish uh, their goals that, that they have. Something I kind of find interesting about all of that, though, um, when we were going to be seeking out businesses to interview for this particular subject, um, I was informed actually by my dad, who used to work for the city of Stockton, that not every business that's in Stockton is actually in Stockton. There's several unincorporated areas that are just county. How do you feel about those areas being a thing? When you look at a map and you look at um, the city of Stockton, uh, city limits, there are county pockets within the city of Stockton. So what that means is that, like in the Lincoln uh, area, um, uh, also Country Club area, like the Lincoln Center, that's a county pocket. So those businesses that are there, they fall under the county's uh, jurisdiction. But at the same time, um, employees, some of those business owners, a lot of those business owners, um, can constituents who frequent those businesses, they live in city, right? And so even though that there's, uh, even though they fall under a different jurisdiction, it's important that um, they make sure and they know that they're supported you know, as well. Why do they, why are they unincorporated or just part of county and not like Stockton? Was it their choice or was it the city of Stockton's? Over the years, over the decades, Stockton has, has grown, um, exponentially, right? And so as a result of that growth, some of these areas uh, are just historical county area. And so as a community, as a city grows and expands its boundaries, um, some pre-established areas, it's called uh, annexation. Uh, they have the option to annex into the city of limits or, or not. So uh, over time, those particular areas uh, have not annexed underneath the city city limits. Does that mess with uh, the taxes coming into the city, them being out, or do they still have to pay taxes into the city, those businesses? They have to pay taxes uh, to the county, not to the city of Stockton. Doesn't that, like, mess up tax revenue for Stockton, though? If those jurisdictions were within the county, Within the city limits, uh, it would increase our tax uh, revenue, but historically that they haven't. So as of right now, we don't we don't know life with them, so we haven't lost anything. If that makes sense, uh, we've grown around them. So if they were to incorporate at some point, um, then we would see an increase in in our tax revenue. Um, there's a lot of businesses around Stockton, right? That are saying that they have county de county fees, city fees, and all these type of fees. Are there any small business loans that would help these small businesses grow? Because there are a lot of vacant business buildings. Is there anything that will help them get into these buildings and make it not vacant? We have several opportunities for small businesses um, to grow and expand their business and also to enhance uh, their business as well. One in particular is a, a facade improvement grant, uh, specifically in the downtown area. Uh, so what that does is that provides small businesses that are in the downtown area with a grant up to $25,000 per business uh, to improve the facade, the, the face of the business, to make it a little bit more attractive. Uh, to enhance our downtown's uh, image uh, so that we can not only just attract more business, but we can get more uh, consumers in the downtown area um, living life. Are these grants like loans? Like, do they have to pay them back? Or once they get it and they rebuild and it looks nice, they get to pocket that? It's a grant, and they don't have to pay it back. Okay. Is there any initiatives for black and brown-owned businesses? So we have opportunity zones all throughout the city of Stockton. And what that does is that those opportunity zones provide um, those investors, people who want to do business uh, in, in the Stockton area uh, with tax incentives. So tax deferred, tax uh, exempt type of uh, incentives to make it more palatable for them to want to invest and do business in Stockton.
Um, so a lot of these black and brown owned businesses are street vendors. So we get the street vendors that we buy tamales from or even the street vendor as a food truck. Um, is there any initiative for them to start a small businesses into a brick and mortar? Or besides the initiative of being in a specific spot, like what if they're already made community in this one area? Is there anything for them to also grow? That's interesting that you mentioned street vendors because what we found, especially during the pandemic, was there were a lot of brick and mortar businesses that actually went and, and became street vendors um, or um, taco trucks or, or food trucks rather. Mm -hmm. and, and they actually uh, had more productivity um, and more revenue uh, moving away from a brick and mortar facility. And so what we've done over the years is uh, we've tried to be as intentional as we can with partnering with those street vendors, um, uh, those food truck vendors, to make sure that, you know, they have a voice in helping to form the policy and how the city of Stockton could best support them and partner with them. Do they have to get a vendor license to be a street vendor, or could they just start selling automatically? You have to be licensed. And is it hard to get those licenses? No, there's, um, there's an opportunity to get a license. What we've done uh, over the years, la over the last couple of years, uh, is we try to take, we try to automate as much as possible. And so, um, like our business license process, we implemented an online business portal um, this past year to try to make it as convenient as possible uh, for, for our residents who want to wanna start, start a business. We used to have a food truck that would be in like the parking lot over by the science and math building, and we don't we don't have food trucks here anymore. We also don't have student chef or the bakery, so we kind of have like no food options here. Can we reach out to a food truck and ask if they can come here? Absolutely, I'm sure that they would love it if you reached out to them and asked them to to come here because it's a it's a win win for everybody. Yeah. Can I, can I just, like, call them, or is there something i got to, like, type in on the computer? You can call them. They know the rules. Uh, they're very familiar with the ordinance, and so city ordinance and what's required of, of food truck uh, and food, uh, food vendors. And, uh, you know, you ask them the questions, and they'll give you the answers, or, and they'll be proactive as well with communicating to you uh, what is expected of them, and, and uh, you can – Delta could definitely go into an agreement with private <laughs> vendors um, to create a better uh, experience for the students and, and faculty here at the college. Which one do you want to call? <laughs> no, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to name some, but I'm not going to do okay. it. Okay. <laughs> we'll no free about it promo. <laughs> the, thing that, the thing about Stockton is that there are a lot of good eats and stuff. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Mm. And, and that lends to, I think. I'd say that lends to our, our cultural diversity. Yeah. Um, you know, we're the number one most diverse uh, city in the nation, and we have some really good food. Listen, I've done a lot of traveling, and, um, you know, there's no better food than the food you can get through our businesses and our vendors here in the city of Stockton. I would even say... I did a lot of I did a lot of traveling and no better taco trucks. Like when I go out of state, I'm like, where are the taco trucks? <laughs> I need me a taco right now. I love the taco trucks. I go I'm I live off March Lane and I like drive all the way downtown. I'm about to well not downtown but like West Lane area. Um, so okay, you, somebody call a taco <laughs> truck and tell them to come right now because oh I'm God. getting hungry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta take a break for pause for the cause. <laughs> Okay, and we are back. <laughs> so keeping up with economic development in our community, um, I know bringing in economic or bringing in businesses into Stockton or um, asking for businesses to come in to build Stockton, do you think it's helping or do you think it's pushing out the working class and making it too expensive for them to live? Well, remember I mentioned that um, city, the city of Stockton's economic development is focused in four areas. Mm -hmm. uh, th that was economic development, um, housing, parking and venues, and, and real property. And so what we have to understand about economic development 
as a whole is that the intent is to uplift communities, not to um, drive, drive communities out. Um, we want to improve the quality of life for everybody throughout our city. Housing is another element of economic development because um, we have a supply and demand issue. And so when there's less supply, the housing prices go up mm -hmm. because there's such a high demand. And so we're working really hard as a city uh, to improve our housing stock um, and through incentives, through programs, uh, through partnerships, strategic partnerships uh, to, to do that through our policy and how we streamline some of our working towards streamlining some of our permitting processes. All that will, will help. So as we're bringing in want to attract new businesses to improve the quality of life and the experience for our, for our residents. We also want to make sure that uh, we have the infrastructure uh, in place as a community, as a city, to support that growth as well. There is a food desert on A Street. Um, it's widely known. It's no grocery stores over there. So let's say that Save Mart, we bring in Save Mart, we put it in A Street. Do you think it would gentrify that area and push out the people that have been living there for a long time? Food deserts throughout Stockton, especially in South Stockton, you mentioned specifically the 8th Street area. Um, that's a real concern, mm -hmm. okay? Um, because that's a basic need, you know, of, of life. One of the things that we realize is that there's been a significant uh, disinvestment in South Stockton for, for decades. And that is a result of some poor policies or policies that we had in place previously that are no longer applicable today. What I mean by that is we had a big box ordinance in place that for years that prevented the, the Safeways uh, of the world uh, or uh, Save Marts or other large grocery stores to be built in South Stockton and areas throughout Stockton. They had like a renter's agreement or something? Because I know those are real and like Walmart has like renter's agreement and no other grocery stores can make it around there. That was what was happening at Nice Street? That was a component of it, but then there was <laughs> a big box ordinance that banned um, – facilities of a certain square footage to be able to to come into South Stockton. That should Stockton be illegal. Areas. Well, I've changed that over this past year. Myself and other council members worked collaboratively to ensure that uh, their constituents, especially in South Stockton, were represented um, and their voice were heard. And as a result of their voice being heard, we took action and uh, we remove that big box ordinance. So now I'm focused on the development, economic development in South Stockton off A Street in the Western Ranch area. Because South Stockton, you should not have to drive to Eight Mile or to Lathrop to go to a grocery store. Right. I'm from Western Ranch and we refuse to go to Food for Less. Um, we look at it as I'm not going there. I'm not going to say any more about it. <laughs> we go to Lathrop, or we used to drive all the way to Hammer Lane, and that was our way to get groceries. But imagine the people that don't have cars that can't do that. And right on the other side on Downing, they don't even have a grocery store. They would. I would literally see people walk over the under the overpass and go to that food for less. So it's good that the ordinance or the box is called the box ordinance. Big box ordinance. Big box ordinance is over because we really, even though there are going to be pros and cons for bringing in a Save Mart, a Safeway, because the small businesses in A Street, are there going to be any incentives for them to keep going if, uh, let's say, a Save Mart opens? How are they going to keep getting the business if people are going to go to Save Mart instead of going to their business? Well, there's enough business to go around for, for everyone. Mm -hmm. that, that's just the, the reality. And so as we focus on, now that the big box ordinance has been lifted, as we focus on economic development, there's data and there's information and there's analytics that are out there that are gonna give us a better understanding and give those who want to invest in South Stockton um, a better understanding of the type of amenity, the type of business, uh, the type of store, to bring to a particular market in a particular area. 
we just opened up a, um, there was just a, um, uh, a Starbucks that was opened um, in, uh, Western Ranch. Uh, in Western Ranch. In and also Charterway, 8th Street, Charterway. Right. Um, and so there's, there's development that are in the works, additional development, uh, conversations that are being had. Um, for for that particular those particular areas wasn't that supposed to be an apartment building because I could have sworn I looked up looked into um, this is a couple of years ago I looked into it. I didn't look into it recently that it was got approved for apartment buildings wasn't that supposed to be apartment buildings that were supposed to be g- built right there there is still an area that's uh, zoned for uh, residential so there's still um, space that will be developed housing okay because i know i read that a couple years ago i i just randomly read articles <laughs> no and that's good it's good it's it's important for uh, the community um uh, to be informed oh. you just found a good one that you were showing me right before we started about the recession oh yes yeah. so the there are a couple of businesses on the record the record newspaper there are a couple of businesses that are scared of a recession coming um is there anything there are any incentives that would help them if a, if a recession does happen to come? Recession is always a concern for, for everybody, but each community will be impacted a little bit differently um, as a result of a re- of recession, nationwide recession. So economists are projecting a mild recession to take place maybe the third quarter of, of this year, um, maybe a 1% to 3% you know, dip. Uh, as far as the economy is is concerned, that's pretty pretty stable. Um, when we when we think about recession, we have um, trauma as a result of the Great Recession um, in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, um, and a little beyond, which led Stockton even to uh, the ver- to bankruptcy. The bankruptcy. Okay, mm-hmm. um, that's not those aren't the factors that we're dealing with uh, today. And so, you know, Stockton, we're, we're taking a very intentional approach to our local economy, to our governing structure, um, our fiscal solvency as a city, uh, because we want our business community and our residents to know that Stockton is, is a great place to live, that Stockton is a great place to do business. Stockton is a great place uh, to, to raise their family because we have our financial uh, house in order. Um, we have been able to program funding um, through federal and sh- state grants um, that are going to help our small business community um, over the next few years. We have an economic development strategic action plan that we rolled out at the beginning of 2022 that provides a clear pathway in how we're going to uh, grow our local economy and we have some specific areas of, of investment it's we're not as a city we're not about putting a plan together and uh, that looks pretty and then just gonna, it's just going to sit on the shelf we want an actionable plan we want a plan that um, our residents and our business community um, can see feel and, and believe in and that's that's what we have so should us as consumers be choosing small businesses over big box in our community? Because they both help in certain ways, right? They bring, the big box brings employment. The small businesses bring also like revenue into the city by allowing people to own small businesses. So is there something that we could choose over? Is like, should we choose small businesses over big box? Small business are the backbone of our entire nation. Mm-hmm. They're the backbone of the city of Stockton. Um, a, a community, a nation can't thrive without successful um, small businesses. That that's really what it's what it's about. And um, the majority of the big corporations and big box businesses, or however we classify it, they eventually started out small at some point. And so. We want to continue to encourage entrepreneurship. We want to continue to encourage innovation. We want to continue to encourage growth um, in our our business community. 
but it's absolutely critical that our residents um, in the city of Stockton support their small businesses. Is there any cap to like um, to having big boxes? Like, it, are they allowed to be anywhere in Stockton, or do you have a cap so the small businesses can also thrive? I wouldn't say there's a cap, but uh, throughout the city of Stockton, there are several different uh, zoning mm-hmm. um, areas where it limits the type of business or defines the type of business that can go in a particular area. Um, commercial business, um, industrial, light industrial, uh, residential, um, even some commercial areas, you could do a combination of, uh, of commercial with uh, like apartments or condos on top or, I know or downtown has area. A, yeah. yeah. Um, so there are four, for an e- economic development. I want to get to the housing. Housing is a big problem that I see going on in Stockton. Is there anything that your office is doing to combat the, shortage of housing housing is not only a big issue facing stockton but it's a big issue facing california as a whole Mm -hmm. um when you when we look at it through the lens of stockton specifically over the last 10 years uh, we've we've experienced a 10 percent population growth Uh, we've experienced eight percent growth in total households um, and uh, our vacancy, which was um, how many units or houses are available uh, 10 years ago, was at 4%. And today, our vacancy is flat at right around 4%. So we've experienced a lot of growth but we out, as, from a population standpoint, but we haven't experienced a lot of growth from housing. And so what I do is... I work hard to represent Stockton at the state and federal level um, to advocate for incentives, to advocate for uh, changes in policy that will make it easier um, for our community to develop more housing. Um, it's, it, it, it's important. There's things that we um, are doing locally here in Stockton regarding our permitting process, streamlining our permitting process and creating um, a better experience for those developers uh, who um, are, are building houses. Uh, we're, we have several projects underway, um, not only affordable housing, but also a market rate housing with a new apartment complexes uh, being built and strategic partnerships um, from an affordable housing standpoint to, to meet certain income. Um, needs i'm glad to hear that there's more housing coming um is there anything you want to say about economic development before we get out of here stockton's open for business Uh, and it's important that um, those who want to do business in the city of stockton understand the vision of the city of stockton and that is stockton will become the best city in america to live raise a family and grow a business and everything that we do in the policies and programs that we implement throughout the city of Stockton is going to be through that lens. And we're going to do it in a very inclusive and equitable manner. Yes, I need everybody to be included. Everybody. Especially economic, <laughs> economically. It's so, I don't know, it's California and it's whatever. I was yeah. seeing all different types of businesses popping up. Yeah, I do see more businesses, yes. What's important to understand is that uh, we're focused on creating the pipeline of employees, that Mm -hmm. workforce development, to meet the needs of our businesses, to meet the needs of industries that want to come and do business in the city of Stockton. Um, And we're really, really uh, excited about that. I'm excited, too. I need a job. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) 209 Talk has been a production of KWDC 93.5 LPFM, Delta College Radio. This program is made possible by listeners like you. Programming is produced by the students, staff, and faculty of San Joaquin Delta College's Digital Media Department. It is supported by the Delta College Department of Arts, Humanities, and Multimedia, the Career Technical Education and Workforce Development Office, and the State of California. 
This is a collaboration with the City of Stockton Mayor's Office. Thank you for listening.